welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this video lecture we'll be making a video on signal transduction pathway now uh, this is going to be an overview to tell you what is signal transduction pathway what we mean when we talk about cell communications and how exactly the signal transduction pathway works and we also talk about the different components of signal transduction pathway how they are related with each other and how they sequentially work to establish a specific function in cell. Now the first question you should have in your mind is in signal transduction pathways what is it and why at all we require a signal transduction pathway. Now the answer to this question is in our body there are cells, millions of cells present. They are working together collaboratively and then they'll establish a specific function of our body for example breathing or walking and different other large function that we can actually see and measure but all these functions are played by multiple tiny cells interacting with each other all the time in response to different type of environmental conditions that can be different kind of stress or any other kind of environmental factor for example temperature and many more so depending upon the environmental recipient of a signal that is in form of different chemicals cells start behaving differently now all the type of different chemicals that are there in the environment that are ultimately signaling a cell to either do two part first it can uh, tell the cell to grow and divide and proliferate while the other type can tell the cell to to be dead so these are the two types ultimate pathway that we see but signal transduction is a process where the signaling molecule which is a chemical coming from outside the cell interact with some portion of the cell outside and tag this signal inside the cell ultimately bring this signal to inside the nucleus and it changes uh, the transcription of different genes and also changes the translation and production of different proteins in response to that chemical element or chemical molecule that overseas is known as a signal transduction pathway so this, in a simple form I can say uh, in this signal transduction pathway we are talking about bringing bringing a chemical signal inside the cell that ultimately reflects in any sort of activity and I told you there are two types of activity possible either it is uh, the activity of cell growth and division or the activity of cell death this in a sense is a broad aspect of the signal transduction pathway now if we look at this thing that this pathway or signal all the type of signal transduction pathways they have multiple components in them now the components are if I list the name of the components they are uh, from the beginning it is first of all the signaling molecule the signaling molecule the second one is the signal receptor And the third one is the different kinds of enzymes or any kind of other protein factors associated with the cell inside the cell actually that is a signal conveyor and the rest of them are signal transducers transducers and last one are the transcription factors these are the different components of a signal transduction pathway now I'll explain each of them in details so that you get an idea about what signal transduction actually is now from the beginning as I told you the idea of signal transduction is very simple that let's say this is the cell we have and there is a signaling molecule coming from somewhere else outside the cell so this is this first signaling molecule now the signaling molecule will definitely interact with some region of the cell 
which is present outside in this case that is a signal receptor okay so the signaling molecule will engage in interaction with the signal receptor that will provide some internal changes of the receptor that can directly influence signal transducers sometimes or sometimes that can also relate with some signal conveyors that are also associated somewhere in the membrane membrane of the cell so now finally through that signal conveyor that can provide the signal to the signal transducers okay so then the signal transducer will ultimately activate let's say this is the form of activation this is the activated portion of the transcription factor that will take entry inside the nucleus where the DNA is present and this transcription factor helps to make the RNA and then that RNA will be converted into protein and that proteins those different types of proteins can have different function of either growth or death any of this two. so if you look at it very carefully you will understand this let me drag it here okay if I look at this picture, it represents all the different components of a signal transduction pathway. Starts with this signaling molecule. When signaling molecule interacts with the cell surface receptor, then it starts conveying the signal. Conveying the signal to either to the signal conveyor, through the signal conveyor, the signal is transferred to the signal transducer, or it can convey the signal directly to the signal transducer. So this part can be direct or indirect. Once signal transducers are activated, there are multiple levels of signal transducers present there. Okay. Start with a specific molecule known as second messenger. Because you know the first messenger is this chemical signaling molecule that is coming from outside the cell. So whatever signal transducer works fast and first inside the cell is known as the second messenger. And then they will transfer and, and activate further signal transducer downstream and then finally activates the transcription factor that can take entry into the nucleus, help in transcription of specific genes, then the translation of that gene is done. Though I draw the image like taking the mRNA and outside the proteins are made, actually the mRNA will be brought into the cytosol and then the protein should be made. I don't have room in the cytosol, that's why I couldn't draw that. Now, the question is how these whole things are established from the beginning. You know, let's say a cell, for example, this is a signaling process, for example, say insulin. When there is insulin hormone interacting to the insulin receptor on the surface of a cell that tells the cell to uptake glucose inside from the bloodstream. Now, insulin hormone is released to control the blood glucose level. So if blood glucose level is high, insulin gets secreted by the pancreas and the insulin, once bound with the receptor, provides some signal inside that tells the cell to produce a channel protein that's known as glucose transporter or GLUT protein. GLUT transporter should be embedded to the membrane so that they can uptake glucose inside those cells. So that is the idea. This is one example of how this works. So you see the whole idea is providing a signaling molecule in response to which there should be some action. Now the action we mentioned here either growth or death ultimately but in case of insulin we talked that it is ultimate uh, it is normally leads to uh, the uptake of glucose inside the cell that helps the glucose to be converted into glycogen and stored there or utilize glucose to produce energy inside the inside the cell. But the question is all these pathways I told you either related to the growth or death. So once we take insulin, uh, once we take glucose, we produce energy. So ultimately the cell wants to leave. So this is a part of the growth associated pathway. So 
if we look at all these portions and examples of all these things I can tell you is the signaling molecules can be of different type now the signaling molecule can uh, be from the from the beginning can, can be from outside of the cell or the signaling molecule can directly take entry inside the cell now in this case of the picture what we draw is the signaling molecule attaches to the receptor and then it brought some signal changes inside the cell and that's the end of the process and signaling molecule will be cleaved it will be removed from outside so signaling molecule technically is not itself entering inside the cell but presenting outside doing the effects inside the cell now there is another type of signaling where you'll see the signaling molecule is hydrophobic in nature example steroids there are steroid hormones for example testosterone is one example of steroid hormone very important hormone and this when bound with the, those testosterone or any other steroid hormones they take direct entry inside the cell and actually they can go directly into the nucleus even inside the nucleus directly and then start the effect okay that thing can also happen so based on the signaling molecule there are two types hydrophilic and hydrophobic hydrophilic signaling molecules as we saw insulin they mediate the response by standing outside while hydrophil hydrophobic will take entry to inside even inside the nucleus the second part is the signal receptor the signal receptor is a very important uh, structure of a signaling molecule uh, signal process or signal transduction pathway the signal receptor sh should engage in a tight proper interaction with the signaling molecule otherwise they cannot relay the signal inside and signaling receptor should have two part of its structure one is the outside part or surrounding the cell extracellular part that that interacts with the signaling molecule another part is the intracellular part this intracellular component of the signal receptor is engaging in interaction by activating or deactivating different other signaling molecules inside the cell that's also necessary in case of uh, other types uh, we will see the example now the signal receptor can be of different type the signal receptor can be voltage gated in some cases very it can be iron gated when the iron attached with one of those receptor regions the receptor gets open or gets activated it can also be enzyme linked or enzyme coupled okay enzyme coupled uh, means in this case the receptor itself is enzyme activity it has some kind of enzyme activity in the cytosolic domain of the receptor that is one thing in case of receptors now multiple receptors as you see one of them can be acting like a uh, like a g uh, or, or activating or inactivating other associated proteins uh, along with it but some of them are enzyme linked uh, receptors as we told the example of enzyme linked receptor is a receptor tyrosine kinase or RTK RTK type of receptors have a cytosolic domain uh, where they have uh, enzymatic activity of phosphorylating uh, the transducers uh, and by phosphorylating transducers they activate kinase proteins that carries on uh, the downstream processing of that signal and there are other types very famous type of receptor known as seven transmembrane receptor when a receptor molecule structures by by transpanning the membrane seven times uh, I think this will be seven times and they are known as seven transmembrane receptor an example of such is G protein coupled receptor these are also known as protein coupled receptor where a receptor functions along with some other accessory protein which is also membrane embedded or membrane anchored and in this GPCR is a receptor which is also seven transmembrane type which involves an interaction with G protein G protein is also an anchored protein that is present mostly in the cytosolic domain of the cell but is anchored to the membrane consisting of three different subunits and with the help of those three subunits this GPCR interacts with the G protein and then activates the G protein once it's activate the G protein 
then the G protein further activate other transducers. So this is a process where you have signal conveyor and this G protein act as that signal conveyor molecule along with the signal receptor. So there is a direct interaction here in between signal receptor which is GPCR and signal conveyor that is G protein. This is one example. So the signaling molecule that will engage in the interaction with this type of receptors are also different. For example, uh, GPCR and G protein uh, related interactions, in those cases mostly we will see uh, the proteins or signaling molecules are growth factors. Growth factors ultimately provide the signal to the cell to grow. So example of growth factor are epidermal growth factor EGF platelet derived growth factor PDGF okay so there are plenty of examples once those growth factor attaches to this uh, GPCR then they finally transduce and interact with this G protein activates the G protein as a result it will further activate other signal transducers inside secondary messengers inside that will ultimately lead to the transcription and translation of specific proteins that helps in the cell cycle to progress. Example, cyclins. So once they make those proteins, they help the cell to grow and divide. While there's a complete other set of response for the death pathway, which we'll see in the next part of this series of videos. Now, the, 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 as we know the signal conveyor, we know about signal conveyor. It's, it's mostly, most of the cases, the G protein. In some case, in case of receptor tyrosine kinase pathways, there are also some sort of signal conveyor known as the adapters. Adapters help the signal receptors to properly interact with the signal conveyor or even secondary messengers. In case of RAS uh, pathway or in, this, in case of MAP kinase pathway, we will see uh, the interaction between receptor tyrosine kinase is very important with the molecule RAS. But in the middle they need an adapter for this interaction and that is GRB2 that acts as the adapter. So in case of this receptor tyrosine kinase or enzyme link receptors we have this GRB2 or SH2 domain containing protein as a signal conveyor in the middle. And about the signal transducers, signal transducers are signaling molecules that are generated inside the cell and the job of signal transducers are to amplify the signal that is present there from the beginning and that is another very important advantage of a signal transduction pathway it's not just providing the information it's amplifying the inf information in further fold for example there is this uh, in, in this case say the epidermal growth factor interacting with the uh, GPCR there or epidermal growth factor receptor or, or EGFR now this interaction tallies the signal, provides the signal inside the cell that tells all the other uh, part, all the other signal transducers to get activated. So it's not likely that there is only one epidermal growth factor molecule. So only one cyclin or only one protein are going to, uh, is going to produce inside the cell. Never happens like that. Signaling molecules are always very less. So one signaling molecule should express the activity of or the production of thousands of the same type of proteins. So how this thing happen? One molecule signals produces thousand proteins because the signal is amplified. The signal provided by the epidermal growth factor then activates multiple signal transducers. Once they activate multiple transducers, multiple of each of those transducers activates even more transcription factors. So as more transcription factors are generated, they will even transcribe more of the DNA into RNA. So those each of the RNA will be translated even more times to give us huge number of proteins. So if I, if I give you a hierarchy of this whole thing, I can write it like this. It start with the signaling molecule and there are multiple signal transducers sorry and then even 
there are even more transcription factors and there are even more proteins made so you will get the idea so there is only one signaling molecule should write as a signaling molecule that signals to produce more and more proteins at the end that is another is known as signal amplification okay so it's not only relaying the signal amplifying too now that ends the whole process and about the about the last thing that i should mention here is uh, transcription factors we know signal transducers are produced even more so they will influence more and more transcription factors to be activated once we activate the transcription factors most of the cases we activate the factors by modifications like phosphorylations or in some cases normally the transcription factors are blocked or masked or inactivated or any kind of inhibitors so once the signals transducers are activated transducers are deactivate those inhibitors that makes the transcription factors activated and then, then those transcription factors take entry into the nucleus and do their job one such example is in case of the cell cycle progression from G1 to S phase. Now the transcription factors for that range is E2F. E2F is inactivated. Here E2F is inactivated by the PRB. This is another protein. Retinoblastoma sensitivity protein. Now once we phosphorylate this PRB there due to this signal transduction that that allows the E2F to be released. Once the E2F is released, then it can easily go and interact inside this nucleus, easily interact with the specific uh, region of the DNA and produce mRNA. Uh, translation of those mRNA can produce the G1S cyclins, which will help uh, the cell to progress from G1 phase to the S phase. And that's what happens as an example. So you see all those different components are different for different types of cell signaling. There are thousands and thousands of type of cell signaling process is there in our cells, in our tiny little cells and all those signaling pathways are kind of going on. Uh, many of them are kind of going on simultaneously at the same time without involving any stress. And one of the very important thing about this cell signaling network is that this cell signaling processes are cross linked. So the intermediates or, or let's say transducers of one signaling can tally and interact with the nearby uh, cell signaling of another transducer and can activate or modulate that depending upon the time. Because you know the difference between the growth and death phase of the cell is very much balanced. If a cell is growing and the cell signaling process of growth is on, the cell death pathway should be turned off. And if the death pathway is turned on, the growth pathway should be turned off. So it's a balanced thing mediated by multiple cell signaling pathways together by cross-linking with each other. And for this cross-linking, they also rely on the intracellular cellular signal transducers. And that's how in the next video we will see how this cell signaling process actually works. We'll also see the difference between this growth and death phase of the cell signaling pathway and how they are linked, how they are cross-talked between themselves and how they are regulated inside our body. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Thank you.